If it's found in the home, chances are it's also found in this house of brands. Can Williams-Sonoma furnish innovation and make your portfolio feel like home sweet home? Can the incredible resurgence of retail continue? Lately, we've seen some miraculous comebacks in the space, including Williams-Sonoma, the high-end home goods chain that reported a blowout quarter a little less than a month ago. The stock, which had been trading sideways for more than two years, quickly broke out the levels we hadn't seen since 2015. So can this thing keep climbing? Earlier today, we got a rare, rare opportunity to check in with Laura Albert. She's the president and CEO of Williams-Sonoma at the New York Stock Exchange. Take a look. Laura, you are in a unique position. You've got unbelievable brick-and-mortar assets. But at the same time, we're talking about 54% e-commerce. How did that come about, and what's the advantage of that? You know, I've been with the company 24 years, and when I walked in the door, we were 40% catalog at the time. And so because of that catalog heritage, when the Internet came along, it was very easy for us to make that transition because we had the ability to ship directly to a customer, and we also had a wonderful house file, knew how to market one-on-one, which is really different than marketing in a mass way. Well, it seems like you've also taken marketing to the next level. You understand digital very well. You're actually handling your own advertising. This transition, which has been very slow for some, is rapid for you. What's in your background that you've been able to pull this off? You know what's great? We live so close to Silicon Valley. So we are constantly down there talking to Google, talking to Facebook, doing testing with them. And because we have seven brands, we can try something here before we roll it across the brands. It's really, really interesting and fun. You've embraced the notion of knowing what the customer wants more than anyone. And I'm wondering why that isn't because you've, you've kind of really digitized it. It's no longer just feedback from the floor, which you get. It's also kind of big data feedback. Yeah, we see a lot of data. We can see what you like, what you're likely to buy next. Um, and we see that as service. So we're, we're working towards a lot more content in our communication with you that's relevant to you. It's personalized. And we, we really believe that is the future is really personalizing the shopping experience for every per- for everyone who comes to our, our stores or into um, onto our websites. And is that part of your push into uh, virtual reality, which I think is the only way we're going to buy higher-end furniture and know what it looks like in our place? You know, it is not easy to put a room together. And we purchased Outward, which is a, you know a premium 3D imaging and augmented reality platform. And they have the capability to build photo real images that then can be manipulated in a lot of ways that help you decorate your home. And so we're coming out with what I think is game-changing uh, 3D room planner very soon here, um, where you're going to be able to drag and drop into your room our products. And this is the first consumer-facing 3D room planner that's out there versus having to have a designer do it for you. Well, let's go the other way, too. Uh, if you, say, had knockoff or inexpensive furniture online, a competitor, uh, they would be at a distinct disadvantage to what you're talking about. Well, there's a lot of people selling a lot of things. I think when it comes down to it, furniture is something that needs to be of quality. You know, it's, you, you sleep in your bed a lot of hours, right. you sit on that sofa, and I think if something's too cheap, someone's getting hurt. And we make furniture that lasts. We make furniture that are, is heirloom quality. And at the same time, Because we control our sourcing and we have so many in-house designers, we're able to give you great value for for the money. Talk to me about the in-house advertising. A lot of people spend a lot of money with advertising firms. Either you have tremendous insight or just you also have great analysis of what sites, you call them uh, sites that are particularly relevant for video. How do you know all this? We've been doing it for a while, and just like anything else that's core, we like to take what's core and learn to do it ourselves the best, because we believe that no one's going to care more than our own people. Now, we do third-party things where someone has a specialty, but, you know, doing your media buying and understanding how you really build a brand online is so important. Now, there is a counterintuitive notion to a lot of the commentary you put put out, and that is, and this is the storyline that I see, stores remain one of our key competitive advantages. In the era of Amazon, I thought brick and mortar was dead, particularly mall brick and mortar. You are telling me the exact opposite. Well, even Amazon believes that they should have some real real spaces. And, you know, when you go into a store and it's wonderful, it's, it's, um, it helps you make the, the purchase. And we see our best customers cross-channel. Um, and there's a lot of people just online. There's a lot of people just focused on big stores. We are focused on both because we know that's how you shop. 
Now, uh, not a lot of commentary from you about millennials, but I know that millennials, they start all the purchases by going online, but they also are value-centric. It seems like you've given something for everyone, and you've no, you brought in an element of value, but quality value. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What's, I think, unique about us is that we're one of the few that has multi-brand, the covering a wide range of aesthetics and demographics, and we're multi-channel. And we can really um, grow with the customer, so whether they come in through West Elm, you know, and then through their life have kids, Pottery Barn kids, Pottery Barn, move to the suburbs, whatever they, we have a brand, we have a product line for them. And at the same time, it's so important that even for our Pottery Barn customer, we give them value in smaller size furniture. So we this year launched Pottery Barn Apartment, which has been really incremental. It's a new customer, and you might have heard me say that our new customer counts are way up. Right. It's these initiatives, these initiatives that bring in new customers, whether it's price point, or whether it's a collaboration with another designer, or even we just did something I think pretty interesting, which is um, we put Pottery Barn Kids with West Elm to develop a kids line, mid-century kids line. And that's new thinking for us because in the past, we thought about each brand individually. So now we're saying, how do the brands work together to produce a more innovative product? Now, I think that throughout that whole uh, range of uh, the panoply, you have stuck by something that I think some of the analysts want to see higher gross margins. What you have been saying is, look, we are going to offer more competitive product pricing, including shipping. Yes. Now, we all know that shipping costs have gone up. How can we not have this compression gross margins? You know, the shipping um, that we do is a different level of delivery than most. We do white glove. We bring it into your home. We set up the bed. We don't just do a door drop and expect you to put together. Now, we have some furniture that is, um, you know, UPS and knockdown, but most of our furniture comes into the home, and it's two-person delivery, and the customer understands that that is not free. We reduced our shipping prices, so we are very competitive now, and that did last year affect operating margins, but we are lapping that this quarter. There are competitors who uh, offer a different level, not white glove, maybe not glove at all, and there's tremendous breakage, and that's a problem with furniture. I imagine that your strategy has kept breakage down, which yes. could really be a problem for gross margins. Right. It is a big deal, and it's also a problem for the customer. Right. I mean, when you do things right for the customer, usually it turns out to work on the P&L as well. And returns and replacements are a huge number on any retailer's P&L, particularly if you're in the furniture business. Right. Now, uh, what are the video channels that really do work? Um, YouTube. YouTube. How to works. hang a drape. YouTube how to works. cook a turkey. Uh, Facebook works. You know, that's really it, yes. right? Those, you know, we're, we're testing all sorts of things. Um, we love our, the bloggers and what they do and the stories they tell. We put videos on our own sites. We are now emailing videos. Um, customers love the movement. They love learning how to do things. And with our Williams Sonoma brand, we have such an opportunity. Recipes are our recipes are one of our most clicked things on our site, and they're out, you know, of course, all over the internet. And it's it's such an example of bringing the brand to life and helping the customer with our products really celebrate. One last question. I see a lot of the analysts are saying, well, listen, times are, it, it's going to get competitive. They've got the tougher comps down the road. I see West Elm doing great. I see the rest of your brands really accelerating. I don't know. We have longer term shareholders who watch Man Money. I don't, should the next fo quarter be the focus here? I think we have momentum well past the next quarter. We have so many initiatives that are going to be incremental. And um, we've been working so hard to set ourselves up for this disrupted times, and we see it as an opportunity. Well, thank you very much to Laura Albers. It's a really, really terrific job that you have done. Thank you. Congratulations thank you. to you. Thanks, Laura Jeff. is the president and CEO of Williams Sonoma. Thank you. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.